everyone, and welcome to our fourth episode of DC Talks. My name is Ben Markham, and I serve as the discipleship pastor at Discovery Church, and it's just a privilege to be here with you today. Uh, our topic is fear, uh, which Don spoke to us about this weekend, but one thing you don't have to be afraid of are this week's guests, all right? We've got our worship team uh, who leads us every week, uh, along with uh, one of our student pastors. So let me just take a minute to tell you who we have. Uh, you see them right now every weekend on stage, and that is Chloe Gonzalez, our worship pastor, along with Paulo Clayton, our, another of our worship pastors, and TJ Malillan, also known as T-Jam. Uh, he is our uh, student pastor at the Winter Garden Campus, and uh, as well as our bass player. And, uh, and one of the things I, I know that all of you do better than I do is wear hats. Um, TJ and Paulo especially, you guys just wear hats better than I do. Uh, it's, it's just a reality. I can't pull off the looks you guys do. But guys, thanks so much for being here. I want to give you a chance real quick uh, to say hi. And, I, and one of the things I love about all of you is you have these incredibly adorable families. I, I, I just kind of stalk you on Facebook and I love your photos. So I thought to say hi to everybody. Maybe you could hold up a picture and uh, give, us, uh, give us the names, ages of your kids and your family that you get to be stuck with right now in quarantine. So let's go to T-Jam. All right. Hey, everyone. This is my family, Familia. Of course, that's Ashley holding down my newborn, Tegan. And this is Travis. He's four now. And Amelia upside down at two years of age. There you go. That's awesome, TJ. Thanks so much. Chloe, tell us about your family. This is on Easter this year. My five-year-old Gabriel is down front classically expressing himself. Jude is being held by my husband, Stevie, and he's three. That would be Jude, not my husband. And my newborn is in my arms, my five-month-old Lucas. Adorable. You, I mean, really, really, really adorable. All right, Paulo, uh, introduce yourself to us, man. Tell us about your family. I've got the smallest family out of this group. It's just three of us total. Uh, my wife, Alyssa, and our daughter, Gwendolyn, who is almost five. She'll be five in one week. And we're good. We're, we're just the right size. <laughs> And Paulo, can you tell us uh, how you have, you've renamed a day of the week because of Gwendolyn, right? Yes, we renamed a day of the week. Wednesday is Gwen's Day. I took uh, to a few years ago posting, you know, parents posting pictures of their kids and their pets. When I got to posting pictures of my daughter Gwendolyn, I decided to give it a hashtag and call it Gwen's Day. So that way, every Wednesday, there was a Wednesday post. I've been not really good with keeping up with it in the recent months. Uh, I'm, I'm going to see if I can't start getting better at that again, because she's adorable, and I think the adorableness needs to be shared. I agree. I've loved that posting trend from you, and I noticed you'd slacked off, so I thought I would bring it up here in this forum for a little bit of accountability, Paulo. I appreciate the accountability. Thank you, brother. Ironing, 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 iron sharpens iron. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does, for sure. So, guys, we're going to get right into this uh, topic of fear. And to do that, uh, I've got a special guest that's going to help me with a little trivia game uh, because fear has really turned into a science of its own. And so we're going to throw some uh, weird fears at you. And here to help me is my son, Max Markham. Uh, can you guys welcome Max? Say hi to him. All right. Hey. So Max is going to help me out here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read you the name of a bizarre fear. All right. And you have to try to guess which of the fears uh, it is. And so Max is going to give you three definitions, but only one of them is true. Are you guys ready to start? Okay, let's jump in. Our first fear is optophobia. Optophobia. Max, give us our options, bud. A, fear of octopuses. B, Fear of opening one's eyes, or C, fear of swallowing gum. Which is which is it, guys? Oh man, they all went B. Max, yes. what's the answer? B. You yes. nailed it. All right, but listen, they're going to get more difficult after this. All right, that those they're not, not all going to be softballs like that. All right. Second one, chorophobia. You got that? Chorophobia. Max, tell us what chorophobia could be. A. Fear of color. B, 
fear of chlorine. Or C, fear of dancing. They look a little stumped on this one. All right, come on, what do you got? The answer is C. And you all got it wrong. <laughs> all right, so let's keep moving on here. Nomophobia. Nomophobia. All right, get, give us some options here, Max. A. Fear of losing mobile phone service. B. Fear of being watched by ducks. Or C. Fear of robots taking over the world. This one is tough. It's not going to be what you think it is. Let's see here. What is it, Max? It is A. And it's a fear of losing mobile phone service. This is a real thing, a real fear that people have, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. Now, our, our, we've got two more. And this one is called geliophobia. 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 Max, what do we got here? A, fear of jello. B, fear of laughter. Or C, fear of gelatinous organisms. Gelatinous organisms. What's it going to be? Geliophobia. Let's get those answers up on the screen. It is B. B. Yes. All right. So clearly now, Clearly now, that, that's got to put uh, Chloe in the lead. Chloe, how do you feel about that? Uh, I would just like to f thank my Heavenly Father and uh, all my family watching today. Yeah, that's good. I love it. All right, We're we making this one. moment possible. <laughs> we have one more for you. One more for you to guess. And Chloe's clearly in the lead. TJ and Paulo, you each just have one. Chloe's got two. Let's go to our final one here. And, uh, and it's called Deophobia. Deophobia. All right. What is deophobia, guys? Let's let's hear it. A. Fear of couples. B. Fear of incorrect grammar. Or C. Fear of dinner conversations. Again, deophobia. Couples, incorrect grammar, or dinner conversations. What do you think it is, guys? <laughs> oh, 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 hold on. TJ just just flashed a D up there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's deophobia, so I guess deophobia. That is such a student pastor thing to do. You're just playing your own game right now. I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, TJ is disqualified. Um, D for disqualified. Yes. <laughs> All right, Paulo's got a C up here, and, uh, and Chloe's got a B. What's the answer, bud? The answer is C. C. C, that's right, it's C. So we have a tie. You guys are just gonna have to live with being tied together. C, it is a fear of dinner conversations. Uh, I don't know if any of you struggle with that fear. Uh, it's, it's, it's one I don't necessarily uh, struggle with. Why don't you, Max, tell us real quick though, before you leave about uh, your favorite fear, okay? This right. is, he did some research with me on this and he came, this is one of his favorite fears that he found. Read the name of that for us. Arachne, boo, true, Phobia. All right. And it is the fear of peanut butter sticking to the top of your mouth. Yes. Oh, what do you think of that, guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Paulo's got the same fear. Uh, it, it's a real thing. Max, thanks so much for joining us, buddy. You guys all say bye to Max. Bye. Bye, Max. Bye, buddy. All right, guys, that was awesome. I'm so glad my buddy Max joined us here. Now, I'm curious if any of you guys have had some irrational uh, childhood fears. And then we're going to break down what our strategy with fear can be, can and should be. So um, maybe start us off here, Paulo. Paulo, you have any just like different kind of irrational fears, maybe something that even came from childhood? Yeah, I think so. I grew up Further north, you would know about this as well, Ben, being from Michigan, but up north you have basements, and basements are just that additional floor under the house, typically under the level of the ground, and, you know, people be afraid of basements. I was afraid of our basement in particular because my dad, for years, did special effects makeup, like for movies and stuff. He actually worked on the first Poltergeist film, so there was sometimes some real creepy stuff in our basement from my dad on makeup stuff yeah 
I can think back on it now. It's cool. It was cool stuff and what he was able to do and how like the creativity and the, the art and the craft behind it. But yeah, I was terrified of our basement, especially that part of the basement for years. <laughs> Absolute years. It sounds like you had a basement of nightmares. <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. I would, I would probably still be afraid of basements too, if that was the issue. Uh, it's cool now, I guess you look back and see what your dad could make, but wow, as a little kid, so my, I mean, you literally had monsters in the basement. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, well guys, uh, uh, Chloe, how about you? Did you have any, uh, do you have any fears things that still just like you're around them and they still drive you crazy? Okay. It is so basic. But bees, I was stung on the head at the pool as a five-year-old, and I never got over it, ever. I still whirl around like a crazy person if one gets near me. I, I'm in that camp with you, uh, Chloe. Literally, I, like, I can't think. I can't function. I just kind of lose my mind a little bit if I'm around to be. I, I, oh, it's, it's horrible. Just horrible. Yes, everything goes dark, and uh, I want to crawl into my happy place. That's basically it. <laughs> so I think that's irrational. <laughs> <laughs> everything just goes dark. All right. Well, now we've had a little bit of time just uh, just having some fun with this. I think what people need and what we all need is some sort of uh, strategy. You know, how is it that we deal with uh, the fears that we face? You know, Don did such a good job of, of, of illustrating for us the fact that we've all got giants and, uh, and, and that there are things that come out of us that are negative uh, when we're afraid, complaining, and, um, and uh, irrational behavior and destructive emotions. But what's the strategy? What does it look like for us uh, to, to deal with, in a healthy way, the fears that we have? And so, uh, TJ, let's go up to you. I, I, I want to, um, I say up to you because you're right next to me on the screen. Um, but TJ, I want to go to you for a moment. When, when you face fear or deal with fear, what's your strategy for it? Yeah, I just try to constantly be in the presence of the Lord. You know, 2 Timothy 2.13 says, He is faithful even if we're not faithful because He cannot disown Himself. And so just try to convince myself daily that God is really faithful. And, you know, if you're in the presence of the Lord and if you're convincing yourself that way, it'll be easier to battle the fears that come your way. So that's how I do it. That's how I do my strategy when it comes to fear. That's great. Anybody want to respond to that? I think the presence of the Lord is where we find our strength. And so just as you're testifying to TJ, I think it's so true. It's like, it's our push-ups. It's where we go to find the extra bit we need uh, for every day. So I love that that's your heart. No, thank you, TJ. I think there's, there's a lot to that. If we're in God's presence, when, uh, when the opportunity for fear comes, we're already kind of armed. We're, you know, a little more just ready for it. Oh, well, I want to hear from the rest of you. What are your strategies? Uh, Chloe, how about you? What's a strategy that you have when it comes to fear? I like to get it out of my mind. For me, it's overwhelmingly large when it's on the inside. And if I can write it down or speak it, then it helps it become tangible. And I realize how much smaller that thing is than my God. And so that's a regular process for me. I think it gets a lot to that idea of taking something that may be in isolation in our mind, even in darkness, and exposing it to light. And uh, we expose fear to light, it really does begin to lose its power. Now, Paulo, you dealt with the fear, so I'm going to kind of ask you two questions. You dealt with some fear at the beginning of the COVID-19 uh, crisis. Can you tell us a little bit about that fear? And, uh, and, then, and then I'll follow up and just ask you how you dealt with it. Yeah, right at the very start of the whole COVID thing, I got sick. We'd been doing some deep cleaning in the house, and I have asthma already, so I'm already in technically an at-risk group, uh, and I have allergies to dust, and deep cleaning triggered a major sinus and chest congestion infection that was with me for two, almost three weeks so it's in the midst of that, you're thinking, okay, first, what do I need to do in case I do need to go get help? Because hospitals and emergency rooms are inundated. Most doctor's offices, I don't know how many doctor's offices would be open. Um, am I okay? Is this going to devolve into something? And I was still having to go out and about to take care of things for work, for us being able to 
uh, get content filmed for our continued services that were streaming. I was still having to go out and about and be out in the world and interact with people, um, wearing my little face mask to keep myself safe. So yeah, I was, I was nervous for a while because again, already being at risk, it just was inflated because my immune system was compromised. Yeah. So, so what do you do, Paula? What's a strategy for you when you're facing a fear like that uh, or fear in general? What's your strategy? My strategy is actually a combination of TJ's and Chloe's. Um, I will speak to people. I will speak to my wife because she's the smartest person I know. She's the person I trust the most in this world. Um, and she's very in tune with the human spirit and people's heart and, and how to help I me. Mean, she has a clinical mental health counseling degree. So she has the capacity and the training to help kind of talk you all down off the ledge, so to speak, um, when, when rough stuff is going on and talking with her helps me to better see my perspective for guys, especially men are really, we, we have this mindset that you don't talk about it. You just deal with your fear. You don't talk about your fear. You don't address your fear. You absolutely should address your fear. And for me, the best way of doing it is to get it in front of someone else, whether it's my spouse, whether it's like, I know Ben, I'm pretty sure you and I at one point or another have had a conversation about tough things that we've each been going through. Talking it out with someone else helps you hear your own perspective and it helps you hear the perspective of someone else. And sometimes those additional perspectives we're getting are coming from God. Mm -hmm. um, and then to tag on to what TJ said, for me, it's going to be scripture. It, it, you can call it cliched, but it's God's word. It's God's truth. And it's one that resonates with people. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. God knows the plan that he has for me. He wants to give me hope in the future. He doesn't want me to stumble. He doesn't want me to fall. And he is going to see me through it. And I'm going to trust him in that as best I can. No, thank you so much for that, Paulo. I, I think you're right on with that. TJ, Chloe, before we wrap this up, anything you want to add maybe to what Paulo said or something he said that just triggered a truth in you? I just think about the fact that community is not lost in a time like this. And sharing with one another, exactly as Paulo said, reminds us that we're in our own journeys with other people. So whether it's picking up a phone, sending a text out, going live with somebody on Instagram, I think there's so many ways that we can be a part of drawing one another's weaknesses and strengths out in this season. And especially as it comes to fear, share with somebody that might not even be in your own household. And there's so many ways to be doing that. And then together you can go to Jesus. I just think it's an awesome season for that. Yeah, for me, it's just taking advantage of God relationships, you know, just be aware and pay attention to who God, you know, gave you to spend life with. And of course, just, I guess the vulnerability and the honesty uh, plays a big key as far as, you know, addressing the fears. I mean, everybody's fearful at some, somehow at some point. So it's okay to say it out loud and expose it into the light. So that's my, my two cents on that. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks so much for the direction that you've given us. It's a big thing to share with people in your life, if it's a spouse or a best friend, uh, to reach out to them, to not be alone in your fear, to, but uh, to take it to the Lord and to take it to his people uh, you know, who will point you back to God's truth. Uh, so guys, thanks for being a part of this DC Talks episode. I so appreciate it. I, I will tell you about the most fearful moment I've had so far during COVID-19. And it's a little bit silly, but it was, it was real fear. Uh, uh, about a week ago, uh, I was closing down the house for the night, shutting all the lights off when I decided to use the restroom downstairs in, in my house. And I did not hear my wife come from the upstairs to the downstairs. And she hid my wife, my sweet little wife, April, she hid with the lights out in the kitchen. And when I walked out of our, our, our bathroom, she jumped out and screamed at me. Yeah. So what do you do when your fear comes from your wife? Like, who do I go to? Because it's not her. So I, I no longer had a, I mean, I had a fear issue, but then I also had a forgiveness issue. And something of a trust issue. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Anyhow, well, guys, thanks so much for laughing with us, for sharing your truth. And, uh, and I, I want to wish you guys uh, the very, very best uh, during this season. Thank you for leading us in worship on the weekends. And, uh, and remember, Discovery Church, don't soldier alone uh, during the season. Be together, be, uh, be, be in community with one another in, in the ways that are provided for us to do that, all right? And be in the presence of God. All right, guys, God bless. Yeah.